K5, the home team, presents coverage of the Rainbow Wahine Showdown from the Stan Sheriff Center. Up next, it's a match between Ole Miss of the SEC and the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine of the WAC. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Leahy along with Lori Santi. Welcome to our coverage, University of Hawaii Wahine Basketball. This is a winner's bracket game in this tournament. Ole Miss last night trailed, uh, trailed Gonzaga for most of the game, couldn't get close. But then in the final minutes, they were able to tie it. And as the final seconds ticked off, it was Valencia McFarland going the length of the court, putting in the layup to win the game for Ole Miss. In the other game last night, the other semifinal, Hawaii had an easy time of it against North Carolina Central. They were never headed, and they were way out in front. It was a team effort, and everybody contributed. Tonight, these two teams, Laurie, look very, very even, and it could be an exciting game. Absolutely, and of course, one of the key matchups will be, as you mentioned, Valencia McFarland, cat quick guard for Ole Miss, two-time state player of the year. She's the real deal, got a great motor, doesn't sit much, and she'll be matched up against Keisha Kaneko, arguably the best player on the Wahine team, the senior, lots of experience there. Uh, is, if you take a look at the Hawaii Permanente key to tonight's games, live well, be well, and thrive, the thing that jumps out of you is the quickness at guard for Ole Miss. Along with McFarland, it's Kayla Melson, who played point guard for three years for this team, is now has the opportunity to play the off guard. And I'll tell you what, that tandem is going to be pretty tough. But for the Rainbow Wahine, I think it's physicality. I think they're going to have to get physical. This is a team that averages 45 rebounds a game in Ole Miss. They're going to get after it underneath. The Wahine have the depth to keep up. This is a winnable game for them, and it would be a great game for them to win against a good SEC team. Earlier tonight, North Carolina defeated Illinois 87 to 58, so North Carolina will play the winner of this game for the tournament championship tomorrow. When we come back, we'll get it all underway. Ole Miss against Hawaii. This K5 Sports presentation is sponsored in part by Bank of Hawaii. Hawaiian Airlines, only one airline is Hawaiian. Kaiser Permanente, live well, be well, and thrive. And by Heineken, give yourself a good name. The starting lineups are sponsored by Hawaiian Tel Federal Credit Union, where membership is open to all island residents. Elimar, you belong. Here's the starting lineups for Ole Miss. Valencia McFarlane at one guard, Kayla Melson at the other, and the third guard is Latosha Laws. The forwards are Fasona, our Fasona Hope and Courtney Martra. The coach of Ole Miss is Renee Ladner. She is in her fourth year. And a record 54 and 48 for the University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. This is the way they will start in this game. Megan Tenen and Keisha Kanekoa are the guards. Three forwards, Brianna Arbuckle, Shauna Lei Puehu, and Ali Patterson. They are coached by Dana Takahara Diaz in her second year. And her record 13 and 21. So we are ready uh, to begin here after uh, this break. We'll come back get things underway with we'll it all. This health report is sponsored by HMSA, working for a healthier Hawaii Ole Miss. Everybody's 100%. Katie Wilson, waiting for Katie to come back. She could make a big difference with this team, but she will not play tonight. The series record is sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. Over 62 years of Kama'ama hospitality. Ole Miss leads the series 1-0. Looking at the officials tonight, Carla Fujimoto, Todd Apo, and Mike Ishikawa. So Ole Miss against Hawaii. Should be a, a good matchup because of the way both of these teams play. 
Hawaii beat North Carolina Central tonight, decisive or last night, decisively 82 to 47. Ole Miss with a storybook finish over Gonzaga, 53-52. Tip goes to Kanekoa, spinning into the lane. Her shot will not go. It was surprised there. Arbuckle winning the tip over a, a much taller Pasana Hope. So here's Ole Miss. They show up four and one on the season. Shot is up, and that is not good by McFarland. Chased down on the side is Marbra. And McFarland will run it out on top again. Hawaii opening in a zone. Not wanting to put that ball up is Melson. But she was tied up. I mean, literally tied up. And could not get the ball away from Puehu. So the held ball rule is in boat. And Ole Miss will have possession. Ball is almost thrown away. Chasing the ball down is Laws. Ikuehu underestimated by Melson. She is much quicker and stronger than you may think. McFarland. That won't go. And the ball is taken down by Kuehu. This is a team that's taken a lot of threes. Ole Miss taking 94 threes on the season as opposed to 59 by the Rainbow Wahine coming into this. Set up by Tennant. Yes. Tennant needs only one more to tie Nani Cockett for the all-time triples level. I think that's important, that early three ball. That'll stretch the Ole Miss defense, Ole Miss defense out a little bit. Open up that post area for Arbuckle. Ball is looped on the inside. That shot is short, but a whistle blows. Putting up the ball was uh, Pasona Hope. She's out of Cleveland, Ohio. She will go to the line for Ole Miss. Ole Miss, a member of the Southeastern Conference, the SEC. They have been picked to finish 10th. That was going to be on Megan Tin, and that was her first. The help came quickly on the lob pass from Patterson, something that the Wahine have been working on because they know they will get passed over the top of this. Not a big lineup for the Wahine, but it's a, a good defensive lineup. 3-2 as Hope hits from the free throw line. Arbuckle looking deep. Tenen cannot hold on the baseline turnover. Hawaii had 13 turnovers in last night's game against North Carolina Central. Which is well below their average that we've seen over the last couple of seasons. They've been up around 20, 22. McFarland at the angle. Laws to Melson underneath, and shot up by Hope is not good. And Hawaii comes up with it. Patterson on the wing, it goes to Kuehu. Arbuckle gets banged as she goes down the lane, but uh, loses the ball, and uh, Hawaii loses uh, the possession. She thought she was fouled. It must have been off of her knee. The officials send it the Rebels' way. Here's Melson. Nelson brings it over at the angle on the left, accelerates underneath, then dishes the ball. That ball is loose, and with it is Kanikoa. Kanikoa underneath, and Kuejo unable to get the ball to drop, but she does draw the foul. Good senior leadership. Kanikoa got caught up a little bit, but this was certainly a transition situation. She's going to have Kuehu on the left. Goes to her the one-handed bounce pass, and Kuehu almost makes a play out of that. Got the ball away that time from Laws. Shot is in by Kuehu. Kuehu in last night's game had only two points against North Carolina Central. She averages seven on the year. That shot up and not good. 4-2 Hawaii leading in the very early going. McFarland will bring it up for Ole Miss. McFarland only a freshman, and we will keep saying that because she has talent that is worthy of note. Melson comes around the top against Kuehu. McFarland against Kamikoa. Melson looking low. 
Trying to get the ball into Hope. Nelson from the free throw line. Her shot is perfect. And you can tell that Nelson, the scorer, and again, as I mentioned earlier, she has been a three-year point guard starter prior to McFarland coming in. But now she's become instant offense. She had 20 against Gonzaga last night. Ole Miss in a 2-3 zone. Shot up Kanekoa. Oh, Matt Kanekoa. Kanekoa shooting with great confidence. She's been getting a lot of rest. Kanekoa, her fourth triple of the season, first of this game, giving Hawaii a three-point lead. Here's McFarland. She could answer back at any time. Way outside. Underneath it goes to Hope on that pass from Barbara. Ball goes out. Hawaii will control on the turnover coming into the game. Is Shea Nelson. So you get the sense that Ole Miss thinks they can run a little high, low, lob the ball over the top of the shorter Wahine defense. They have come up empty thus far. So Laws goes out and Nelson comes in. So two alliterative players on the floor. Nelson and Nelson. Nelson number one, Nelson number 20 for Ole Miss. Down low it goes to Patterson. She tries to muscle and it would not behave for her. Hope saves it from going out of bounds, gets it into Marbra. Here's McFarland through the lane. Shot is up by Melson. That doesn't go. And Hawaii will bring it up court. Kaneko. Kuehu. Kaneko, another three. Second of the game, fifth of the season, and it's 10-4 Hawaii. With it is McFarland, looks it into Hope, has position, blows the layup, ball is put up, and that goes in. Off of Marbra, Courtney Marbra. 15-16 left to play here in the first half. Hawaii leading by four. The Jack Fact is sponsored by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. Oxford, Mississippi, the University of Mississippi, known affectionately as Ole Miss. Almost 20,000 students founded in 1848. They play on the Tad Smith Coliseum, 9,061. And there you see their address. Courtney Marbra from Jackson, Mississippi, 6'1", sophomore. One for one from the line this season. Now she's one for two, leaping rebound underneath by Arbuckle. Outlet pass goes to Kanekoa. Kanekoa so far has had the hot hand for Hawaii. Tenen. Patterson works it to Kanekoa. In the corner, Arbuckle. Arbuckle looks down the baseline. Here's Tenen. And then close to that record. Shot up by Kanekoa. Doesn't hit this time, but right there with the rebound and the shot and the score is Arbuckle. Well, she is a highlight reel so far this season, and she's going to get a weak side rebound here. Comes in in perfect position. Watch Arbuckle. The miss is going to go over the other side, and there she is turning in the air, losing the defender, and going up for the bucket. She'll have a chance at a three-point play. Ball is on Nelson, number one. So Arbuckle, who is 16 of 34 from the line, only 47%. She's had her troubles. She continues to have her troubles. But the ball comes off uh, to Jackson, who has come into the game. Camilla Jackson. Camilla, Jackson, the freshman out of Oakland. And Camilla Jackson in four games has 19 offensive rebounds. That was number 20, a rebounding machine. We've talked about that here early in the season, and she is not disappointed here right away in this game. So Hawaii will play the ball in Kuehu. Nikki Bird has come in for Ole Miss. Shot up by Tenen. There's she's tied. Hawaii in three-point shots in this game is four for four. So they have brought the long-range bombs with them tonight. They lead 15 to six over Ole Miss. 
You know, they shot almost 50% last night against North Carolina Central. That wasn't a fluke. Ball comes in to Nikki Bird. She turns around and walks. So Hawaii will control on the turnover. So Hawaii's Bert, played very well so far in this game. They have, and Bird a huge presence inside. No matchup there from Dana Takahara Diaz. Bird at 6-4, and of course she's got Rebecca Dew at 6-3 on the bench, but has yet to go there. Here comes Kamikoa. Kamikoa to Tinnen. Tinnen in the deep corner, won't take the shot. Coming out the checker was Laws. Pass goes in, and uh, the Arbuckle ended up with it. Well, it was not Arbuckle, but Jackson ended up with it on the baseline. So foul is on Laws, Latosha Laws. That's her second. We'll see whether she sits down a while for Ole Miss. Kanikoa gets it in to Tenen. Arbuckle leaves it now for Ayabe, who has just come into the game. My Ayabe. Muscle shot, not good. Rebound again by Jackson. And she is deposited on the floor. Jackson knew she was in trouble, tried to get rid of the basketball, found herself underneath, missed the shot, got her own board. But you got to like the offensive execution of the Rainbow Wahine, similar to what we saw last night. Their spacing's good, they're, they're seeing each other, getting good looks underneath the basket. Marlboro comes back on the floor. Ball is in to Jackson, gives it to Kanikoa. Kanikoa, that shot, good. That's a three, that's her third. So Hawaii now leading 18 to six with 13.24 left. Take another look. Well, when Kanikoa is on, she is on. And Hawaii on a 14 to two run early in this game. Hey kids, there's a special UH club just for you. Stop by any Papa John's Pizza Hawaii store to join the UH Kids Club. You'll receive an official club t-shirt and a variety of other benefits. Join the UH Kids Club today. So it's interesting, Ole Miss is yet to extend their defense, their wing players, and there's just no ball pressure. McFarland running from side to side. The skip pass working very well for the Rainbow Wahine, and when that doesn't work, They've got the post presence of Arbuckle and Camilla Jackson. Backcourt pressure now by Hawaii. They back off as McFarland race horses into the front court. Here's Melson. Double high post. Nelson. Three-pointer way long. And the ball will be returned up court by Kanikoa then to Ayabe. Underneath. Shot up and not good by Jackson from Arbuckle. So Ole Miss trying it again. Here's McFarland. Here's the ball up to Nelson. Hope underneath, spinning move goes. Boy, that's, over, that's over uh, Jackson. Nice little head fake. When she gets it that deep on the block, she's going to be difficult to handle, and Jackson got a taste of that right there. Hawaii leading by 10. Kanikoa to Tenen. Works off the pick by Jackson. Her three-point attempt is not good. Marbra with uh, the rebound. McFarland to Melson. Shot up by Marlboro, that's all in that. Ole Miss, a little more patient the last couple of trips up the floor. They close the Hawaii lead to eight. Tinnen answers back, yes. How do you lose the best three-point shooter thus far this season? Maybe not in this game, as Kaneko has been unreal, but Tinnen alone in the corner. Now the career three-point leader with 129 threes in her career. That's not bad at all. Nelson gives it up to McFarland. And Ole Miss 
Trying to be patient, looking for the high percentage shots. And off the window that time was Hope. Shot up by Nelson. That doesn't go from three point line. And bringing the ball up court is Connie Cole. Connie Cole working it to Ayabe. Connie Cole, baseline drive, puts it up at short. He had the idea, but not the execution. McFarland with it on the outside. Coming out to the high post. Double high post for Ole Miss. Nelson loses the ball, taken away by Connie Koa. Looking for possibilities. Gets to the lane, falls down. She may have been tripped up. 10-24 left to play in the first time. Hawaii continues to lead. They lead by 11. Welcome back to the Stan Sheriff and the Wahine 21 to 10 overall miss here with 10 24 left in this first half and while we were away Megan Tinnan was given a game ball for breaking the career record for three point field goals right there in this game against Ole Miss and Megan Tinnan of course missing last season with the red shirt here lost her mother in the course of her career to cancer has come back and is having an outstanding season breaking 90 Cockett's old record of 128. Hawaii leads by 11. Here's Kuehu. Back to Ayabe, out in front. Over Nelson to Patterson. She muscles the two-hander up and in. 23 to 10, that's a 13-point lead. That's the biggest lead in this game for Hawaii. It comes with 10 minutes left to play in the first half. McFarland accelerates. With it is Melson. Melson hits the floor, no whistle. The ball is out of bounds. It will remain with Ole Miss. Into the game is Tori Slusher from Wichita Falls, Texas for Ole Miss. She is a fifth year senior. 6-3, so 6-2 and 6-3 at the post. And Melson getting a little frustrated the last two times down the floor. They have been physical with her defensively. Melson, the high scoring guard, number 20 for Ole Miss. And Nice job controlling her here early. Slusher. McFarland, baseline drive, goes all the way, double pumps, doesn't go. And the ball comes down to Tennant. Tennant, too much red, doesn't have the numbers. They work it to Kuehu. Ayabe, that ball stolen away for, by uh, Ayabe or from Ayabe. Goes to put it up. You know, I've talked about Shauna Kuehu's long arms before, and I'm telling you, take a look at Kuehu. She's going to go up in the air and catch this after she comes down, a last-ditch effort, and strips the basketball from Nelson. Very acrobatic, very athletic. Slusher in the corner against Patterson. Nelson picked up by Kuehu. Works around Patterson. McFarland goes down low to Bird. Her shot goes. Nice shot by Bird. Ole Miss has a lot of uh, size now in this lineup. Kuehu. Oh, oh, they're going to call Rebecca Dew with the walk. And you talked about the size for Ole Miss. Is Takahara Diaz, there you see a good look at the head coach, puts in Dew to try to match up. And Dew gets called for the travel on a good offensive board. So Hawaii answers back with size of their own. Patterson in the game, Dew in the game. And McFarland, who just plays forever and ever. Round jumper is uh, knocked at that time by Nelson. Hanikoa, pass. That's just a line drive bullet pass. 
goes out of bounds. And they say it was last touch by Ole Miss. So Ole Miss tried the big line up the three big post players and they've gone the other direction now. And this is a quick Wahine lineup, so it's tough to match up that way. They're at a disadvantage quickness wise. Sydney Haydell, number two, is coming to the game for Hawaii. Kuehu gets it to Patterson. Foot's been moved by Patterson. That ball goes. Does it count? It does. I'll tell you what you get with Allie Patterson. It is, a, is physical play and a good sense of where she is on the basket. That a great quick turn move. Felt the defender on her back. Goes left. Goes right, excuse me, and up with the left hand. Foul on Bird. That's her first. Patterson is, is at the line for Hawaii. She is perfect. Four for four on the season. Ah, we've said that, and she misses her first one. Hanekoa. That ball rattles out, comes down to Nelson. She's double teamed. Nelson able to get it to McFarland. McFarland, full speed. And a blocking foul call. Boy, McFarland went in with no fear. Foul will be on Hanekoa. 7.59 left to play in the first half. Hawaii up 25 to 12 over Ole Miss. 76 leaderboard is sponsored by 76 Gasoline, provided in Hawaii by locally owned Mid-Pack Petroleum. This is the WAC offensive rebounds. The team, Fresno State, Hawaii is second, followed by Nevada, New Mexico State, and Utah State. We, we have a, an apology to make, and that is to the family of Sydney Heidel of Woodland Hills, California, 5'8 freshman. We were told, truthfully, we thought that to pronounce her name was Heidel, but it's Heidel. So from now on, it will be Heidel until someone tells us different. And Heidel on the floor right now, number two, the freshman. Good defensive players, gotten some pretty valuable minutes here early in the preseason. Here's Nelson for Ole Miss, McFarland. McFarland for far away. That's short, ball is taken down and put up. That doesn't go, that ball put up by Marbra. And a foul called underneath, and that's going to be on due. So really the difference in this game, obviously to this point, the Rainbow Wahine six of eight from behind the arc. They have hit the three ball. They're 9 of 17 from the field, and Ole Miss 5 of 17. They're only shooting 29%, so it's the, the shooting that's made the difference. Shot up and in by Marbra. She's from Jackson, Mississippi. She's now 2 for 2 from the line. Her best performance, 10 points. That's against Sam Houston State. Marbra's second shot. That'll dance in. Now that makes it 25 to 14, and Mississippi has what they have done. Ole Miss has trimmed the lead from the high in this game of 13. It is 25 to 14 now for Hawaii. Tight zone for Ole Miss. Guayhu dumps it to Patterson. Patterson tries to get it into Dew, but it's whacked away. Goes to McFarland. Great pass to Melson. She does not get the ball to fall. Patterson trying for possession. And the ball just kind of zips away from her. But that a great defensive play by Kanakoa. Got a piece of that shot by Melson. Looked like it was going to be easy points in transition. And the defensive side of the ball for Ole Miss, more intense. Arbuckle comes in for Dew. Three-pointer by three-point attempt that time by McFarland doesn't go. Melson gets it underneath. Excellent pass. Going to put it up with Bird, but that ball did not go foul called. Foul and my foul is going to be on Kuehu. You see both these guards love the penetration dribble, and one of the few times they've actually pushed it off inside to the post player, and Bird. We'll get to the free throw line. Bird had eight points. She led 
everybody in rebounds yesterday for Ole Miss. She had 13 against Gonzaga. So she's at the line, makes it 25 to 15, reduces the Hawaii lead to 10. Patterson goes out, coming in is Jackson. Camilla Jackson. Second shot is good. And now it's a nine point lead for Hawaii with six minutes, 50 seconds left in the first half. Connie Cohen gives it up to Arbuckle. Guejo, her shot in the lane. And not there, put back, and that's in by Jackson. Again, an offensive board and a put back by the freshman. Jackson, her first double double of her career last night, 19 points and 12 rebounds against North Carolina Central. She and Patterson will rotate liberally at that same position. Hawaii leading 27 to 60, back to an 11 point lead. Whistle blows. And the foul is going to be on Arbuckle. That's her first personal. Arbuckle fighting for position. They call her with the forearm. She's on Bird. McFarland gets it into Melson. McFarland for three again. And that's offline. Idell with the ball. Keeps possession. Connie Koa to Arbuckle. Spins in the lane, double team. Doesn't really have a shot. Tried to force it up. That decision was a bad one. McFarland stops, pops, hits. You've got to pick the ball up earlier with McFarland. You can't get her let let her get in that deep. And the last two offensive possessions for the Wahine have not been good. 27 to 18. Hawaii leading. 5:30 left to play. In the first half, baseline drive. Putting up the shot is... Idell was good Idell. off the Idell, that's it, Idell. Idell, good baseline drive by that the other freshman, and she'll get to the free throw line. So Bird in the middle of this zone has really caused problems. Bird number 22, 6'4", junior from Haven, Mississippi. by Heidel is not good. She's now six for 10 from the line. Heidel had five points last night against North Carolina Central. Second shot is good. So 10 point lead. Tenen will come back on the floor. Heidel will leave. Not quite the substitutions we've seen over the past four games for the Wahine. A little bit more conservative on this coaching staff part. They're trying to keep their best players on the floor, just rest them intermittently. Here's Melson. Melson against Guehu. Guehu cuts her off on the baseline. Shot up by Nelson. That's a three-pointer over Tenen. Kanekoa will bring it into the attacking zone. Under five minutes to play here in the first half. Kuehu, tough shot. That won't go. With it is Melson, two on two. Melson right down the middle of the lane, puts it up and in. Great shot by Melson. And timeout has been called by Hawaii. 4.41 left, 28-23. Hawaii was leading by 11, by 12. Now they lead only by five. Whenever you attend a University of Hawaii game at the Stan Sheriff Center, you could win an upgrade from Bank of Hawaii for courtside seats. For more details on how to enter and win, visit the Stan Sheriff Center on game day. You could be sitting courtside courtesy of the Bank of Hawaii. Ole Miss with an 11-3 run. But they've made it close at the end of the first half. You go back to last night's game, Ole Miss against Gonzaga. Gonzaga led throughout, even into the second half, even down the stretch. But then Ole Miss started to chip away, chip away. And at the end, they were right there and stole it. McFarland with a layup as the time ran out. Definitely a change in tempo. We've had two open court jump shots in transition, right? One from McFarland, one from Melson. That's really been a difference. And then, of course, you had the three ball. So those seven points came awfully quickly. Ole Miss 
starting to push the tempo. Kanekoa to Kuehu. Shot up and not good that time by Camilla Jackson. Here comes Ole Miss again. Ole Miss senses something here. They can catch up. That shot goes. That's all net. That ball was in by Marbra. And now it is 28-25. And Hawaii's lead rapidly receding into the past. Kuehu maintains control. Dumps it into Arbuckle to Jackson, yes. They got the double team on the wing. It was a nice pass. Once it went inside to the post, you got a little two on one there. Hawaii now leading 30 to 25. Finally breaks that run. McFarlane at the angle. Shot up by Nelson. That is not good. Jackson with the rebound. Outlet pass. All the way down to Arbuckle from Kanikoa. Arbuckle can't get it to drop. And here comes McFarlane yet again. Underneath, throws it out of bounds. Not able to get up that far was Hope. Hawaii leading by five. 321 left first time. The Hawaiian Airlines record book is sponsored by Hawaiian Airlines. Only one airline is Hawaiian. Hawaii career steel leader, Nani Kake. DJ Ituma, Andy Redden, Brenda McCartney, and Melania Zama. A couple Iolani graduates in that top five, and Azama and Ituman. Good crowd here tonight. One of the bigger crowds we've had so far in this preseason. There's some great teams in this tournament to watch. North Carolina, Illinois, Rainbow Wahine, Gonzaga. It's an eight-team tournament, one of the few eight-team tournaments we've had in a, quite some time. If Hawaii wins this game, they will play North Carolina tomorrow evening at 6. If they lose this game, they will play Illinois. Down the middle, Kuehu puts it up left-handed, not there. Jackson put back, no. And the ball is taken out of the air by Hope. But Jackson's had some offensive boards again tonight. She's missed a couple of chippies. Getting bumped down low a little bit more. And she's got to take into consideration the shot blocking ability of Ole Miss. Caleb Melson with it on the outside for Ole Miss. Tries to take it to the baseline. Here's McFarland. Her repertoire is wide open now. Her shot is not there. And the ball is taken down by Jackson. Kuehu pushed up the floor by Kanekoa. Tennant, the all-time record holder for three-point shots at the University of Hawaii. Get the ball into Arbuckle. Arbuckle spins, puts it up, no. And the ball taken out of the air by Marbro. Oh, Miss comes back. Way shooting percentage starting to tank here a bit. 30 to 25. They still lead, however, in this first half and have led from the outset. Shot up and not good by Melson, but the putback is good off the lane by Hope. Basana Hope. Hope has been impressive here in this first half. Hope now with six points. So along with five rebounds, a couple of those offensive. Ole Miss has reduced the Hawaii lead to three. It was 13. Shot up off the lane, not good by Arbuckle. So a whistle blows and Arbuckle will go to the line shooting too. But as we said, Arbuckle has had, I mean, it's been an adventure at the free throw line for Arbuckle. Arbuckle is 0 for 1 at the line in this particular game. And Arbuckle is 16 for 35 from the line on the season. Yeah, we talked about her improvement as an inside post player with her back to the basket, and she's improved her game in many ways here, and this may be one of the last frontiers for her to work on. As a post player, you've got to be able to make free throws. It's the second one. 31-27, 129 left to play here in the first half. Old Miss will walk it up the floor. McFarland. And we say that she is a freshman because she is so talented. She has so many different shots. She can run a team from the outside. Her passing is impeccable. 
They drop it inside to Hope. Her shot rattles in. And Ole Miss is right there now, 31 to 29, coming up on a minute to play here in the first half. Anikola brings it back for Hawaii. Hawaii needs a shot in the arm here. Could be Kanikoa. That's a three. Boy, credit to skip pass all the way across from Tinnin. And Kanikoa, she has been nearly perfect. Four That's her four. Of five. Four of five in behind the arc. 34 29. Some breathing room for Hawaii with 34 seconds left. Nelson in the lane misses everything. And Hawaii will push the ball up the floor. So Hawaii with 31.5 seconds left. In the first half, Connie Koa will take her time and be very patient coming up into the front court. No missing, kind of a 1 4 zone. Lined up across the baseline on the bottom. Connie Koa directing traffic. Connie Koa works off our buckle. Eight seconds left, seven. Shot up by Kuehu. Good! Great shot just off the lane by Kuehu. That soft, silky touch at the buzzer. And Farnham tries to hit from far away. Can't do it. So Old Miss cozies up to Hawaii. They trail 31 to 29, but then Hawaii with some excellent shooting. They provide the halftime score at 36 to 29. Watch this shot by Kuehu. Welcome, welcome back to halftime of Rainbow Wahine basketball as they host a Waikiki Beach Marriott Rainbow Wahine showdown in a winner's bracket game. They are up 36 to 29 against the Ole Miss Rebels. Lots of action in that first half. And for Ole Miss, it was about the freshman, Valencia McFarland, came in here averaging 14 points a game. She's one of eight from the field, but she has been in the assist column with three assists in that first half. Hassana Hope, the big 6'3 senior, has been really the answer offensively as she has had a little inside-outside touch. Hope with eight points in that first half to lead Ole Miss. It has been about the three ball for the Rainbow Wahine. Megan Tinnen becomes the Rainbow Wahine career three-point leader. She breaks the mark on this next three-point play. As she hits it from the corner, Tinnen three of four in the first half, the senior for the Rainbow Wahine, and Kanikoa gets in on the action as well. Keisha Kanikoa, four of five from behind the arc. The Rainbow Wahine just torching it early. They shot 50% in the first 10 minutes of this game. They are up 36 to 29. When we return, we'll discuss a little bit more about what may happen in this second half. This is the How It Works segment, sponsored by Central Pacific Bank, CPB, works for you. We're going to take a look at the last possession of that first half, and you've got Conico with the ball, and Ole Miss disguising what's going to end up being a little triangle in two as you see Melson and McFarland playing man defense on Tinnen and Conicoa, but look who's wide open. Tinnen, the senior, finding the freshman, Shauna Le Kuehu. So the margin is seven at the half on this jump shot by Kuehu. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. The Wahine up 36 29 against the Rebels of Ole Miss. Big Island Candies introduces their new ultimate chocolate chip cookie. It's infinitely more than just another chocolate chip cookie. Visit them online at BigIslandCandies.com to find out more about this new tantalizing treat. Hawaii is up 36 to 29 at halftime. Hawaii's biggest lead was 13, and then as this uh, first half started to wind down, it was Ole Miss's turn to chip away, much as they had in the second half last night against uh, Gonzaga. But Hawaii was able to hit the last five points to lead by seven. So the question now, the second half looms. What's on tap? Second half is sponsored by Heineken. Give yourself a good name. You know, I think if you're Renee Ladner and you're Ole Miss, good things happen when you got out in transition. I think it's important for them to run with the basketball. The strength of their team are in the guards, McFarland and Melson. 
get out on the break, look for some early offense, try to get back into this game quickly. On the other side, for the Rainbow Wahine, you continue to do the things you have, which is shoot the three ball well. You're seven of 11 from the arc. The skip pass is what's really set up the open three look. So if they come out in that zone again, you come out shooting from behind the arc. So Hawaii leading by seven as we're about ready to start uh, the second half. The winner of this game will play North Carolina tomorrow for the tournament championship. And the loser will go up against the University of Illinois in the game for third place. Coming up at the end of this game, a player from each team will be selected as the most outstanding, sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. So all in all, this has been a very good matchup between these two teams. We have seen the talent exposed first for Hawaii and second for Ole Miss. You know, I think the experience too, Jim, we saw Ole Miss go on that 11 to three run and they weathered that a little bit as you talked about. They managed to keep that seven point margin at halftime. And I think in the past we've seen them panic in those situations. I think the senior leadership of Tinnan and Kanikoa helped that a lot when they're on the floor and don't allow, they stop the bleeding, so to speak. So both teams getting ready to come on uh, to the floor. Ole Miss with the same starting lineup that they had at the beginning of the game. And we'll see if Hawaii responds the same way. And they do. Latosha Laws will play the ball in for Ole Miss. She'll get it into Valencia McFarlane. And we are underway in half number two. Laws pass underneath. That's uh, captured by Hawaii. Our buckle at the top. Get him back to Kanekoa. Very important, the first five minutes of each half. That's where you have to tell everybody what you're going to do and how you're going to play it. And whether you play it well, that is a double dribble. Dribbling violation on the part of Kanekoa. That's a turnover. Kanekoa, little mental lapse there. She had to dribble to gain control of that possession and then restarted. Good call by official Tarapo. Hawaii with nine turnovers in the game so far. At the start of this tournament, Hawaii had 24 turnovers a game. Well, somebody was asleep that time because that ball went right in uh, to Hope. Well, and Rosanna able to just deposit the ball in the netting. Hawaii in the, in the man, miscommunication between the posts on which post to post. 36-31. <laughs> Ole Miss in a very tight zone. Forcing Hawaii to perhaps shoot from the outside. Spin move by Cuejo goes to Arbuckle. Her shot is not good, but a, a foul will be called. So Arbuckle will be at the line, but as we said, Arbuckle has not been consistent. She is one for three from the line tonight. I would expect the Wahine to attack those post positions with Hope and Marbra. Those are the two leading scorers from the first half. And Hope now with two personals. I'd like to see her get three if you're the Rainbow Wahine. Arbuckle able to hit the first one. Arbuckle with four points. And the second rims out. So Melson will bring the ball up court. For Ole Miss. McFarland, here's Laws. Leaves it for Melton. Works off the pick, gives it to McFarland. She's open, her shot goes. So McFarland only one of eight in the first half. And zero for six from behind the arc. Gets her first three of the ball game. Comes in here averaging 14 points a game. She had been awfully quiet offensively. 
McFarland now with five points. Steal by McFarland. Lead to Nelson. Up and in. 37-36. Ole Miss breathing down the backs of the Rainbow Wahine. And Wahine, here in the second half, not started with the energy that they had in the first half. Walking the ball up the court. Two guards for the Ole Miss, Melson and McFarland, really, um, really rest in this zone. You know, they don't come out. They played a full 20 in that first half. Whistle, calls. whistle blows away from the ball. And I believe it's on Laws. A lot of tussling going on away from the ball. That's going to be McFarland for her first three and her fifth point of the ball game. And then in, off of the steal, points off turnovers. McFarland to Melson and the layup. Keisha That's come into the game. And Keisha Kanakoa with the three ball. So Kanakoa continuing to be red hot. That's the fifth in the game for Kanakoa. The fifth. 40-36. Away moments ago, led by one. Shot up and not good that time by Nelson, number one. Remember, there's a Nelson and a Melson. Melson is number 20. McFarland will play the ball in. And then there's Marbury. Yeah, we need pretty good time over there. Nelson looking low against Tenen, coming over to help. At that time for Hawaii was Bundaiti. And it was a success because coming up the floor now is Kanekoa. Shot up by Kuehu. Doesn't go. The ball swatted away. Coming up with it is Nelson. Goes right by Kanekoa. Kuehu trying to drop back, but she was outnumbered and putting the ball in was Nelson. Boy, here you're starting to see the quickness, and it's Melson and McFarland really leading the way in transition. Hawaii playing at a different speed here in the second half, and they're being victimized by Ole Miss. Arbuckle, that's not good, and the ball goes out of bounds. See, Hawaii just doesn't have, like we said, the energy that they had in the, in the first half. And you see Kanekoa reaching for Melson, but they've got to get some white jerseys down the other direction. Inbounds, that goes off Arbuckle, and they'll give it to Ole Miss. 40 to 38. Hawaii with almost the slimmest of margin. And Melson will bring the ball up court. Away rather anemic in the second half. McFarland will bring it out. Goes over the defense to Nelson. That ball dropped off Mabra underneath, and that ball does not go in by Bird, Nikki Bird. But she's fouled, and she will go to the line. 15-39 left to play in the second half, and Hoy has to try to start the engine. The Outlook is sponsored by Subway. Eat fresh. Tomorrow, Hawaii will play either North Carolina or Illinois. And they will go on the road against Portland State and the Portland Pilots of the WCC, the West Coast Conference. And then on December 19th, they will play the UCLA Bruins, but they will play them in Hilo. Why? I have no idea. But I guess they want uh, people in Hilo to see either Hawaii or UCLA. But doesn't Hilo have a team? Huh? I'm sure there'll be a uh, huge turnout. Get scheduling makers, you know? They they don't sleep well. Try to get to keep everybody happy. They, they don't sleep well. Shot up and not good by Nikki Bird. It is 40 to 39. Hawaii leading by one. Ole Miss has just turned up the volume on their offense and defense here in the second half. A 
couple quick substitutions here. It's going to be Camilla Jackson, the freshman, in for our buckle. Getting the ball in is Melson, stolen away by Tenen. Tenen will bring it in to the front court. Kanekoa looks into that 1 2 2 zone. And that zone really collapses. Pin in three point territory. Kanekoa with five triples in this game. Five. See, hey, Melson has a motor. That's an M and an M. Has yet to rest, and she can turn it up defensively. Umgajai almost dribbled it out of bounds last touch by Ole Miss. Kanekoa. Kuehu, tough shot, no. Long rebound comes off to Melson. Now, Ole Miss in a position to take the lead. Melson with it. McFarland. That ball does not drop. And a foul called on the back that time. And that's going to be a Bird, Nikki Bird. Third personal foul on Bird. So those post players continuing to rotate. Cope, Marbra, Bird, all bigs, all over 6-2. And Hawaii, amazingly, Hawaii continuing to hold on. They lead by one. Bungaite misses everything. So Hawaii just right now, would you agree with me, they just are not playing well. They have not solved this zone by uh, Ole Miss. Hawaii will play the ball in. Well, it's hard to live and die by that three. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. It's worked well, obviously, for him, but you got to find something else there. Kauai with the miss from the top. So here comes McFarlane. Pass underneath. That is an underhand. <laughs> And that ball is in by Bird, and now the change, the first lead change of the game. 41 to 40. Ole Miss, it comes at 14.07. Ungaiti again with a three attempt, that no good. So pulling the trigger early, the tempo definitely changed the zone, lulling the Wahine to sleep. Melson, baseline draw. Stepped on the baseline, a turnover. And Hawaii will have another opportunity. Hope comes into the game. And also, coming in for Hawaii is Du, Rebecca Du. And you see the reverse layup uh, by uh, Bird. So the defense, it has been their staple thus far this season, the Rainbow Wahine. The man defense has gone away here in this second half against Ole Miss. Kanekoa out on top. Kuehu works out the pick by Du. Kuehu down the middle, puts it up in the lane. That's not good. Du with the rebound. She puts it up. That doesn't go. Finally, Jackson has a chance at it, and the ball goes out of bounds. They say Jackson touched it last. See if they redo that call. It looked like the official, yeah, they're going to have a conversation. He had a better angle over on the sideline. Watch the... The tussle between Jackson and Hope. They reverse that call. Replay, it actually looked like it might have been the right call, but initially I thought it was off an old Miss player. It was an example of two officials looking at each other, and one was not happy with the other one. <laughs> you really going to do that to me? <laughs> yeah, in front of all these people? Going to say I blew the call? Is that what you're going to say? 41 for Ole Miss, 40 for Hawaii. Do now goes back uh, to sit down. Jackson in the game and back in the game for Hawaii is Arbuckle. Ball is looped inside. Arbuckle trying to go over the back. And we have a whistle. And it's the shot clock whistle. Play, yeah, shot clock ran out. Not a great pass on the inbounds play. That's not good either, the shot clock running out. Got to find some intensity on the defensive end of the court for the Rainbow Wahine. 41-40, Ole Miss. McFarland looking low, low crouching dribble. 
Pass into Hope, double team, and she traveled. So post to post, had three white jerseys rather quickly. I think it was Marbra down low, and they're gonna call her for the turnover and an opportunity here for the Wahine. Tenen. On the call, three point territory. Tenen forces up the three, and that is not good. With the rebound is Nelson. McFarland with a quick pass. Marbra, that ball stolen away by Kuehu. Ahead to Connie Koa. She gets hit by Nelson. No call. Connie Koa lays it up and in. Well, that's a great play by Connie Koa. Just a scramble for the pass from Kuehu alone was a good play. And in the finish, the shake and bake. Connie Koa on fire in the defensive end, too. You see the rebounds all missed 27 to 25. That has been nearly identical the entire ball game. Away, teeter totters back into the lead. Shot by Nelson from the deep corner. The triple doesn't go. Hope with the rebound. McFarland ends up with it. And will bring it to the angle against Guehu. McFarland, zip. Boy, McFarland looks around. If there's nothing there, she'd say, oh, well, why not? She hasn't been shy. Taking the most shots of this team so far. She was letting it fly early, but didn't find her range back there until the second half. It's her second three-pointer. She has eight points for Ole Miss in this game. 44-42. Ole Miss leading, this is their biggest lead. That post to post pass difficult because you got such height in Marbra and hope that it's difficult to make that pass. That time Arbuckle threw it right by Jackson. 11-23 left to play here in this game. Hawaii now down by two. Well, Hawaii with deep carburetor trouble in the second half. And it's evident by walking the ball up the court. I mean, in fact, Hawaii has only two field goals in the entire second half. They're two of 11, 18%, and conversely, six of 11 for Ole Miss. They're shooting at 54%, so they started off rather slow, but have picked it up in this second half. Hawaii in a 2-3 zone now. Here comes Ole Miss. Laws, McFarland. Nelson. McFarland again? No, not this time. Timmon able to get the rebound, and she is fouled, reaching over was Hope. That's the third personal on Hope. She'll quickly take a seat as Nikki Bird will come back into the game, and that's the post rotation. They've used those three. Bird takes up her station in the 1 2 2 zone for Ole Miss. Ayabe now in the game, number 25 for Hawaii. Kanikoa back out to Tin and saves it, almost turned it over on that pass. Patterson, her shot rolls out. Leaping rebound, easy rebound that time by Laws. Here comes McFarland to Nelson. Nelson loops it on the inside, and that's a walk. Well, credit Arbuckle flying over on the double team and just caused Bird to be slightly indecisive in her move, and they get the travel call. I thought the last time down the floor, that's the right shot to take. Allie Patterson from the elbow. They're dropping back on the other post, and that shot is open. She's got to keep looking for it. Tenen dribbles into the corner, then terminates. Gives it out to Ayabe. Patterson, for some reason, tried to find somebody on the baseline, but there was no one wearing a white uniform. Well, she attracted attention that time, and Arbuckle was open, but it was too late. On the call. Yes, two-pointer. Kanikoa from 12. That simple inbounds play. Kanikoa handing it off. And Patterson back to her, sealing the defense and the easy jump shot. Kanikoa having a spectacular offensive game, 19 points. We're tied at 44. Law loses it. And the ball comes off to Ayabe. And then to Kanikoa. 
Ends up with it, and the ball goes out of bounds. Hawaii cannot afford that uh, kind of uh, play. Well, Yabe's going to bring you some energy from the bench. He's going to up the tempo of the game, which is a good thing, but you, you got to know when to stay under control. So tied at 44 with 9.30 left to play in the game. Nelson to McFarlane. Works off the pick by Marbro. Nelson puts it up. That's not good. And then trying it is Bird. And the whistle blows. Having a tough time keeping the 6-4 Bird off of the offensive glass. Keisha Kaneko has made all three field goals by Hawaii in the second half. One player. That won't get it done. Tied at 44. We pick up the game with uh, Nikki Bird from Bookhaven, Mississippi at the line for Ole Miss. Perfect. Ole Miss takes the lead 45 to 44. Second shot on the way. This is not good. Long rebound comes off to Tinnan. Kanekoa will leave it for Ayave. Kanekoa won't go. Patterson can't hold. Chasing it down is McFarlane. Oh, miss. Controlling. Nelson looking underneath. Nelson to Marlboro. Marlboro, good turnaround just off the lane. 47 44, Ole Miss. Patterson loses it. Another turnover for Hawaii. Long pass. And Nelson. Goes out of bounds with it. Well, caught a break there while he behind in transition. And I think Kanakoa's got to go back to running the point here. So you be struggling a bit. Duke comes into the game replacing Patterson. So Patterson gets the yank with 8-16 left to play in the contest. Kanakoa, she's been directing traffic all game long. Do with it. Do rotates down low. Jackson at the high post to get it to Do. Do at the other side, takes it to the other side of the basket and scores. Get a little smile out of Rebecca Do with the left hand. It was a nice feed from the top. They're having to keep an eye on Megan Tinn and it extends the defense a bit and allows Rebecca Do a little space inside. So Hawaii trailing by one. McFarlane against Ayabe. Nelson bumping into Ayabe, almost stole it away. Goes to McFarlane. Pass underneath. Staying with it. Is Bird, that shot up and not good from far away by Nelson. And so it is 47 46 with 7 17 left to play in the contest. Take a look here at the Ace Hardware Helpful Assist brought to you by Ace Hardware, the helpful place. McFarland to Bird underneath, and for McFarland, the freshman, that's her fifth assist on the night to go along with eight points. And for Nikki Bird, the junior post player, that's her eighth point of the night. can't believe that Valencia McFarland is 18 or 19 years old. You take a look at her, she looks so young. And only 5'4", that may be a generous listing. What a superb point guard she's been. And she is a freshman. We say it yet again. Ayabe shot up by Tenen. No, that's short. 
And Bird with the rebound looking for the outlet. Gives it to McFarlane. But it's been one and out. The Rainbow Henny not smelling an offensive rebound here in his second half. They've taken care of the glass. Nelson almost stolen away. It is stolen away. Hanekoa against McFarland. Lays it up, blows the layup. Ayave saves it, gets it back in. Tinnen with it. Good trailing by Ayabe. Jackson slams it off the glass. Something has happened to the finesse. I think she's playing against some pretty big players, and it tends to you tend to hear footsteps when you put the ball on the floor. Bird pushed by Dew, no call. Nelson goes around. Jackson goes to the baseline, runs into Dew. Gets it back to McFarland. She hits. McFarland is just a pest. 11 points, three triples. Well, that was big on what was a pretty physical double team down low. Turns into a three-point shot. But Hawaii, the faucet has just been, the scoring faucet has just been turned off, except for Connie Koa. Down low, Jackson up and in. Jackson. Well, she went up to get that pass, and good response by the freshman Jackson. Hawaii stays close. It is 50 to 48 with 5.17 left. Timeout has been called by Ole Miss. So Hawaii is showing some life finally in the second half. And they are staying to within a very debatable range on who is going to win this. They trail now by two, but that's the, this kind of basketball here showing signs of life. Jackson getting the pass, able to muscle it in. On the other end, the double team and Nelson with the end out to McFarland. And what turned into almost a turnover. Three point shot by McFarland. So two decidedly different offensive possessions there for the Wahine over two post players. That pass perfect by Connie Koa inside to Camilla Jackson. Tinnen's going to take a rest. You know who doesn't take a rest? McFarland. She came into this game. She has played all but seven minutes of the last five games, and she, she's played every minute of this game. Looks talk like about, she could play about, about two more games. Yeah, she could play all night, all day. Talk about a motor. Fifty to forty-eight, Ole Miss. Nelson gives it up to McFarland. Nelson hits. Boy, that's a beautiful shot. Shay Nelson, perfect form out there. One of the best perimeter shooters. We've seen and uh, Kim comes in off the bench for the three ball and for Nelson That's her second She now has eight points overall Kanako Ayabe to do if you can handle it Ayabe instead of going a little bit higher so Du could go up with it Hit her in the numbers Yeah, she just drilled it 53-48, Bird goes out for Ole Miss. Shot up Kane Koa. That's not good. Do trying for the rebound and the foul call. Do with good position underneath. Jay Nelson trying to push her out of the way. Gets called for the foul for Nelson. That's her second. Fifth team foul for Ole Miss. Kane Koa three point territory again. Koehu, baseline, her shot, short. And the ball goes out of bounds, they'll give it to Ole Miss. But Hawaii just not, when you compare it to how they played in the first half, I mean, not positive at all. Well, that first half misleading, I mean, 7 of 11 from behind the arc. You know, you forget that the three ball is really huge in that first half, and they needed to hit a few more here in the second half. McFarland accelerates, and she gets deposited by Dew. They're going to give the ball to Hawaii. 
little contact there by Dew. Not the type of player you like to practice against. <laughs> no. no. Arbuckle comes in for Dew. Arbuckle now at the high post. But a, a violation of some kind that time by McFarlane. 53-48. One. Rather now a 2-3 zone by Ole Miss. Boehu to Jackson. Boehu. She's having trouble hitting today, that's for sure. Ayabe with the rebound but loses the ball. Coming up with it is Melson. And McFarland and Melson on the double team on the wing. Here's Melson straight away. Shot is up and that will come bouncing out by Marlboro. Tommy Koa yet another time. Tries to get down low and they foul this ball. And Melson doesn't like the call. Stayed with Kanekoa, but she was moving so she'll get the block call. And that'll be her second personal. Three minutes and 18 seconds. And you see Kanekoa trying to put the pressure on to get some kind of space to put up the shot. And there you see Melson very upset with it. More to come. Three minutes and 18 seconds left to play in uh, this game. The winner will play North Carolina. The loser will play for third place against Illinois tomorrow evening. We'll have that game at 6 o'clock. Connie Koa misses the free throw. Connie Koa with 19. Shot up and in. Connie Koa has been, uh, in this tournament at least, very consistent. She has a total of 20 today against uh, North Carolina Central. She had 18 yesterday. And high percentage shooting, Jim. She's shot well from the floor. Here's McFarland, who has driven Hawaii crazy for all the things that she does. Shot up uh, by Marlboro now, and the putback goes in. Bird has been the and, difference. Yeah. And that three post rotation is as much as we talk about Melson and McFarland, the inside game of Ole Miss has been better than the inside game for the Wahine. That three pointer is short by Kanekoa. Buehu with the rebound, however. They work it out to Kanekoa out in front with 2.30 left to play in the game. 65 to 49, biggest lead by Ole Miss. Tenen who set the record for three-pointers all-time in this game. Didn't take that shot. Jackson is short. Boy. And going to call a foul. That could be on Bird. It is on Bird, and Jackson a little apprehensive on what she wanted to do with the ball there. It was good movement offensively. Kuehu with a little inside pass. Jackson wide open, and there's going to be contact with Bird with the body, and Jackson will go to the free throw line. Jackson's shot is good. That makes it 55 to 50 with two minutes and 13 seconds. That also means that Hawaii within striking distance to steal this game. Second shot on the way to reduce it to, to a four point lead doesn't do it. Ball comes off to Nelson. Now McFarlane will leave it in the backcourt for Melson. Those free, throws, Melson. those free throws becoming more important. Well, Wahine only six of 14 from their own free throw line. And Melson calling the timeout for Ole Miss. So Ole Miss uh, calls the timeout. Very impressive with the way North Carolina played in the earlier game today against Illinois. Illinois tried to make some runs, but they just couldn't do it. And they lost 87 to 58. So they North Carolina, a, a, a state known for basketball. And even their women's team is worthy of note. They will try for the championship tomorrow against one of these two teams, either Hawaii or Ole Miss. And that North Carolina team, huge. Some big, big post players. And we've seen a few big post players for Ole Miss tonight, but North Carolina's got a couple that run the court like guards. I think one of their post players had a double-double in the first half. 
So it's 55-50. Nelson with it, and Nelson trying to steal it from behind that time is uh, Kuehu. Kuehu Lost just, her balance. Just got her feet tied up with Melsons. So Todd Apo, the former councilman. Does he have to register by Monday in that uh, District 1 election? He does take a fair amount of grief when he shows up at the arena. He does. He does. Here's McFarland. Goes around Jackson. Here's Nelson. Much time left on the shot clock. McFarland looking for Bird. Nelson from the deep corner. That's in and out. Whistle blows, however. Foul will be on Bird. Away from the ball, trying to get position before the shot, and the whistle was blown. And for Nikki Bird, that'll be it. That's five. So she is disqualified. Bird leaves uh, with a total of 10. But the points may not have been the most important statistic or characteristic with the way that she played, because when she was in there, she really challenged the Hawaii offense. Took up a lot of space they, in the center did. of that zone. Kuehu goes all the way, lays it up, it does not go. And the ball will, will uh, remain in Hawaii's hands. Last to touch it, one of the old Miss players down low. Kuehu looking, still looking. Gets it into Tinan. Oh, he's got to make a move right here. Got to put up the shot. Arbuckle. Yes. Nice pass inside Arbuckle. A little flash towards the basketball. Got her defender on her back. And Kuehu, the nice assist. Arbuckle with six. Coming up on a minute to play. 55-52. Old Miss. Oh, he can't be standing back down in this zone. But apparently, that's what they're going to do. Now they come out a little bit. Get it to Hope. Hope almost loses it. Back out to McFarland. Four seconds, three seconds on the shot clock. McFarland. Wow, can't believe she took that. That shot did not go. The ball goes out of bounds. And Hawaii will have it with 35.8 seconds. So the defense ended up being good enough. Hawaii with three timeouts left. Look for them to use them if necessary here. Kind of will bring it up. And Hawaii calls a timeout. They are three points behind with 31.8 seconds left to play on uh, this shot clock here. They, they led most of the first half. In fact, all of the first half. And only in the second half, they seem to just run out of gas. They seem not to be as smooth as they were in the in the first half. And certainly they were not as consistent. They got into trouble, gave up the ball. They had turnovers. And it, it just was their shooting. Their shooting just disappeared. I mean, it was only Ka uh, Kamikoa for a large part of the second half. She was the only one to score for Hawaii. You know, they extended that defense, that zone defense. They got out on the three ball shooters, 10 and and they struggled to find post scoring. I thought Bird was a real key, as we mentioned. She fouled out as Hope returns for her. You've got to get Kanekoa good touches here. Ayabe's going to come into the ball game, probably to run the point. So Kanekoa has a little more flexibility to move without the basketball. Thirty-one point eight seconds. Oh Miss with Nelson and Nelson, also McFarlane, Marbra, and Hope. And they have another timeout. Little gamesmanship on a coaching part there. And it'll be interesting to see if Melson and McFarlane man up a little bit and try to hassle the basketball with Kanekoa and Ayabe. We saw that at the end of the first half. The three post players remaining in their zone and 
Well, Hennig got the best of that as Coy, who hit the jumper at the end of the first half. Do you like this? Call him timeout after timeout? Well, it's interesting. Usually you wait to see what how somebody sets up before you, you call it, right? That's the... Well, no, I, I, I don't agree with it at all. I haven't agreed with it for as long as they pulled this stunt. And that is, I think that if you have a uh, you have a timeout, you've got to play. You've got to play some basketball before you can call the next timeout. You can't call timeout after timeout. Makes the game rather long. Well, I'm not to save that many for 30 seconds is, you know, also arguable. Here we go. 26 seconds left. Shot up, Connie Cole, that's offline. And they fight for the rebound. Jackson is there. They will call a, uh, let's see. If it's possession, the arrow is pointing. No, it's a foul call. So they're gonna call a foul on Jackson. Looks like she might have done a nice job of tying the basketball up, but gets the foul call instead. And the pressure from the Wahine as Ole Miss will try to inbound. 20 seconds left. And they're going to say that it was a hell ball and Hawaii will get it and another chance with a three-point shot to maybe tie it great 19, hustle great hustle point four a great hustle play by Megan Tinnan diving keeping her hand on the ball we'll see if we can get another look at this maybe and it looked as if it was the opposite it looked like as if the play before was the possession but instead it was the foul and this time the Wahine come up watching the corner of your screen it's Tinnan Didn't look like a possession, but that's the call. Take a look as the tangle comes over between Nelson and Megan Tinnan. And you see the thumbs up for the possession call. Arrow goes the Wahine way. So a huge break there. It was Kanekoa coming out of that timeout looking for the three. Ole Miss was not happy, as you can imagine. Hawaii has no timeouts remaining. 19.4 seconds. So it's not over yet. Ayabe gets it in 10 and for three. Missed everything. The ball is captured by Ayabe again, but she can't hold it. The ball goes out of bounds, and Ole Miss will have it with 14 seconds left. If you are going to put up a shot like that, you got to get it closer. Boy, it was a good, good stack out of bounds, and Kanekoa led everybody astray. The foul is going to be a Arbuckle on Melson. That'll. So they'll uh, put Melson on the, on the line. It's only their 15th foul. But they got the shot they wanted as Tinnan had a good look at that three. So a timeout has been called. It can't be a Hawaii timeout because they have no timeout. 13.7 uh, seconds left. The best thing that you can say about Hawaii in the second half is that they kept it close. Now they have a chance here, just have a chance. They don't have the ball, but they have a chance. See all the screens coming and Tennant flashes away towards the ball, gets to look at the three and just off the mark. Tennant hasn't gotten a lot of looks in the second half. He hit three in the first half. And now Ole Miss will attempt to inbound it with 13.7 left on the clock. So getting the ball in is Marba. Melba. Now but dribbles it up on the sideline and was last to touch it. Dribbled it out of bounds. She anticipated a foul call and Ayabe knocks this ball off of Melson's leg. It's off her own leg. She knocks it off her own leg. No foul there. Nine seconds left. The shot. Good! Tied at 55 and here comes McFarlane again. Her shot. Not good. And we'll go into overtime, tied at 55. Well, they had enough chances at it. The third time's the charm. Kanekoa got a look with about 15 seconds left and missed it. Then it was 10 and she missed it. And this time, 
on a Melson turnover. Koniko on the inbounds gets the screen from Arbuckle, lets it fly, and hits it. Mc, uh, McFarland tried to have a reprise of what she did yesterday against Gonzaga. Got down, put up the shot. This time it wasn't good, and we will play a five minute overtime period. So Hawaii able to hang around, hang around. They had chance after chance. They were running down, no timeouts. And finally, for her sixth triple of the game, it was Connie Cole. And she has 23. She is 6 for 10 in three point shots in this game. You know, surprising the Ole Miss wasn't covering Kaneko on the inbound. And they couldn't catch up with her. Go in the other direction away from the inbound play. And Arbuckle catches McFarland on that screen. And there's a wide open look. Kaneko is 6 of 10, 8 of 16, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 23 points. So they'll tip it up again. Ala Fujimoto, the referee, hope against Arbuckle. Arbuckle taps it, goes to Tinnan. So Hawaii has the first possession in overtime. We are tied at 55. Connie Cole, not good, long rebound. The ball comes off the hope. Ahead to McFarland. Down low to Hope, turn around, that goes in, comes back out again. Jackson with the rebound. A quick possession there by Ole Miss. Five full minutes here, and Hope took a quick turnaround. Arbuckle works it to Kanekoa. Jackson comes out to the high post. Arbuckle goes down low, shot up and not good by Ayabe. And the ball goes out of bounds, Ole Miss. Will have possession. Marbra will play the ball in. Here's Melson. Melson with only six points. She has only one field goal in the second half. Number 20 with the ball. Nelson to McFarland. Whistle blows. And they and they foul underneath. Hawaii will have the ball. That play set up for McFarland to get a look at the three. She lined up in the opposite corner, took the long route. They let Nelson run the point with the foul coming away from the ball. We've seen that quite a bit in this ball game. Lots of screens, lots of jostling going on away from the ball. Marbra called for the foul. Away with it, 16, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Tenen. Seven seconds. Pin it. Down low to Jackson. Underhand layup won't go. And the ball comes off to Marlboro. Still tied at 55. 320 left to play in overtime. McFarland. Leaves it outside for Nelson. Nelson tries to take it deep. McFarland puts it up off the lane. Doesn't go, fighting for the rebound. Marbra gets it, but knocks it into Jackson. Hawaii with it. Tanikoa cut off by Melson. Ayabe to Tinnan. Tinnan can hit from far away. She has positioned herself. Now Tanikoa sends her into the corner. She's open, her shot on the way. Not good, and a foul called underneath. Boy, they're going to call that on Arbuckle with the screen as Tinnan came around. There was some contact. Tinnan getting a good look on the other side of the court. Hawaii had maneuvered Tinnan for this shot. That's a good call. You could see Arbuckle with her left knee trying to catch Marbra from going out and flying out at Tinnan. McFarland against Ayabe. This is Melson. Goes around Tinnan, gets underneath. Goes to muscle it up, but is partially blocked by Arbuckle. Comes back outside. However, to Nelson, to Melson. 
Mississippi fans across the way standing. Hawaii fans rather laid back. Down low it goes. Oh, that's good the defense. The whistle blows. Yeah, good defense and a, a three-second call. Well, that time on Hope. Camilla Jackson, the freshman, stayed put on the head fake and turned the ball right back into her, caused that travel. Less than two minutes to play now in overtime. Mayabe with it. This is where it's important that your scorers are taking shots, Jim. You've got a minute 48. Going to make sure that Kaneko is getting shots, Arbuckle's getting shots, and Tinnin's getting shots. Kaneko, that's offline. And the high rebound is uh, gathered in by Laws. They've really owned the boards. They're up 44 to 36 in the rebounding category, Ole Miss. Melson with it. Nobody has scored in overtime, not yet. Shot up, and that will not go. That shot up by Laws. Fighting for the rebound, the ball comes off to Ayabe. Ayabe looking low. Finally pulls the ball back. Everybody gets caught up. Jackson. Jackson. That left-handed underhand layup won't drop for her. And the ball is taken down by Nelson. Now the intensity really building. 45 seconds left to play in overtime. No one has scored. Still tied at 55. Keep your eye on McFarland. She's running with Ayave. Down low, shot up. That'll drop. Good turnaround shot by Hope. Where did that come from? Almost a baby hook, a half pivot, quick 50, shot. 57-55, Hawaii has got to come back here. Whistle blows, timeout call by Hawaii. 23 seconds left to play in overtime. And that was a rather surprising shot, the way things were going back and forth, back and forth. And then Hope, nice to the hoop. We expected it to come from Melson or McFarland, the guards, but just almost like a touch pass. Went up right away with it in Hope. 12 points tonight to go along with eight boards. None bigger than that deuce right there. So Hawaii been pushed into the corner yet another time as they try to survive in this overtime. They survive in regulation time. Hanekoa giving them life in overtime. Now they have 23 seconds. Well, they got a good look at the post. Jackson had a good look, got the shot that she wanted, just couldn't get the roll. But Hawaii still has possibilities here with 23 seconds left. They realize their shot, if they put up a shot, has to be a good shot. They, got to, they have to get a good look. I'll be interesting to see who inbounds this, and I would guess that Nelson will pick up Kanekoa. They won't lose her on this inbound like they did in the and the inbounds at the end of regulation that allowed Kanekoa to get free for the three. Ole Miss just couldn't finish in regulation. They had their opportunities that tied the game up in a bow, but they couldn't They couldn't adjust to the knock. Hawaii kept loosening it and loosening it and getting possessions on uh, dribble drives and things like that. So, well, but now with 23 seconds left, they want to make sure that everything is buttoned up and you, you know, you're not looking for a quick hitter here. You got 23 seconds, you're down two. Not the same situation as being down three with, with 13 seconds left. Timon Kanekoa, who has come back on the floor along with Arbuckle and along with Jackson. The Kuehu, as you mentioned, back in for Ayabe. 23 seconds and it starts counting. Kanekoa against McFarland. Kanekoa takes it deep, puts it up in the lane. That won't go. Kanekoa with the rebound. Kanekoa puts it up again. That won't go. But she draws the foul. But Kanekoa just having fun out there, Jim. She is owning the basketball court. That was a play cleared out. Everybody down at the baseline, letting Kanekoa go one-on-one. -on -one. And she will get to the free throw line with a chance to tie this. Needs two. That hurt. Timeout call. 
Took it a little quick. She took it a li little bit quick. It is still 57 to 55. More timeouts coming your way. But Connie Koa just took the responsibility upon herself. She said, I'm not going to, if I don't have a good look from out here, I'm going to take it deep. She did. Her shot in the lane was a good one. And Her second shot had possibility. She did draw the foul. And that is shot she normally makes that first shot. I think she was surprised at how open she was. So now with 13 seconds left, she has one more free throw. She can draw within one. She doesn't get that. And Laws goes up and gets the rebound for Ole Miss. And hopes are dimming for Hawaii here in overtime with 12 seconds left. Remember, the winner will play for the championship of the tournament tomorrow against North Carolina. The loser will play Illinois, the Big Ten. Remember now, no timeouts left for the Wahine, so they've got a rebound and go. Laws. No. Rebound. Still fighting for it. Still fighting for it. Finally, the whistle blows. Oh, they're no, going, to, they're they going to give it to Hawaii, I believe. So that's a foul call, Jim. Is it a foul call? Ladner I'll tell you, can't I'll tell you right it. now, Rene Ladner is really upset with that call. Right side of your screen now. Watch kind of Koa in the tussle. And it was Laws that came in, wanted the possession. They called a foul on her instead, and Ladner can't believe it. Kanakoa gets another shot at it. Didn't we just see this? Wasn't this shown before? Haven't we, be, haven't we seen it in the theater? Ah, this is a different ending. 57, 56, seven seconds left. And you know who's gearing up? McFarlane. Second shot is perfect. 57-57, and here comes McFarlane at midcourt. McFarlane stops, she pops, this is the game, not there. We go into overtime again. Unbelievable, a replay, and it was Laws with the foul after the free throw that sent Kanekoa to the free throw line. She gets another shot, and she's money. Head coach Renee Ladner still upset with the call, wants an explanation. And the official Mike Ishikawa talking to her face to face. This is going to be a debatable call on the, on the possession. There you see Connie Cole, watch her feet. She gets the ball, she turns. Picked both of them up, so could have called the travel, travel there. But and right there, right there. She was stepping all over the place, but she got the possession, made the foul shots, and here we go at uh, overtime number two. So who's got legs left? Remember, Melson and McFarlane. McFarlane actually, she getting a rest? Where is McFarlane, Jim? I think for the first time in the entire game, she's getting a rest. That shot up by Cuejo, not good, that's short. Ball comes off to Melson. Here comes Ole Miss, you're right about uh, McFarlane. She's cramping on the bench, the trainer yeah. over there rubbing her calves. And but she played more, she played more than 40 minutes, played 45 minutes. Never went out of the game, speaking to McFarlane. Melson goes down deep, hooks it up, doesn't go, ball comes off to Jackson. So the guards for Ole Miss, too much time with the basketball. They need to get their posts involved. That's where they took charge of this game was inside. Kanekoa gives the ball up. Kuehu gets down low to Jackson, one on one. Her shot goes. Not to be denied, the freshman missed a couple in regulation. Not happy about it. In double overtime, she gets two. Nelson down low. That shot is dealt up and not good by Hope. 
Big opportunity here. We didn't see a score until the under a minute in that first overtime period. They were not at 55. Just a little different for the Wahine. Pinnon gives it up to Kanakoa. Kanakoa looking into that 2-3 or 1-2-2 zone. It's kind of an amoeba defense. Changes as the ball moves. Underneath it goes again. Jackson! That's the second time that Jackson has put the ball in. Most players for Ole Miss are tired, Jim. Slow to get up and down the court, and Jackson has found a second gear. Remember, Patterson started this ball game. There's been a good rotation between Arbuckle, Patterson, Dew, and Jackson, and that's allowed the freshman to retain her legs here. Take a look at another Jackson basket. Base is up, the double team comes, but it's a token double team. And again, so adept at using that left hand and her body off the glass, four points. Two minutes and 53 seconds. The change in Ole Miss is the absence of McFarland. And I think the absence of Bird hurt him, you know, Bird. Again, that Nikki Bird, the dominant force inside for Ole Miss at that, in that zone, and she fouled out in regulation, and they've missed her. But now here in the second overtime, they miss McFarland. Absolutely. And we'll see if she returns coming out of this timeout. I'm going to guess she, she will. That's the risk of not resting. Get into games like this, and this, of course, she played 40 minutes last night. Or did she? She was out maybe for three minutes last night, and tonight close to that as well, and surpassing it in overtime, of course. But she is the cog. She is the leader. She sets the offensive pace. But this Hawaii team, spunky. And Jackson has become the hero. Well, there's definitely some belief that they're capable of winning these games, and that's really where it starts. And Kanakoa, what an offensive production night she's had. Guess who's back on the court? McFarland. McFarland gives the ball up. To Melton, her shot won't drop. And a foul is called. She will go to the line. Hawaii leading by four with 2.36 left to play in the second overtime. Kanakoa, that'll be her third personal. Caught, caught Nelson, Nelson on the arm. And it's the first free throw attempt for Kayla Nelson. Second shot. That's not good. Goes to Jackson. So two minutes and 30 seconds left, second overtime. Hawaii leading by four. Again, directing traffic is Kanekoa. Uehu signaling the play. Jackson and Arbuckle out of the high post. Knifing to the hoop. And up and in, Uehu. So you got the two post players leaving it underneath for Kuehu. Lots of room, no traffic, and she turns it into two. Now things are serious for Ole Miss. Things are serious. McFarland for three. No. And the ball comes off again to Jackson. She has been tremendous in the second overtime. And McFarland will push Kanekoa full court. Arbuckle trying to help. And the call all the way, lays it up, no. Ball comes off. That ball comes off uh, to uh, Marlborough. Bringing the ball down is Melson. She, her shot had nothing on it. Boy, and it's taken out of the air by Arbuckle. And credit Megan Tinnan picking up the ball on Melson. Tinnan has played well, quietly well, on the defensive side of the ball and has the most minutes in this ball game. Hanikoa brings it over to the angle. Almost stolen away. Hanikoa recovers. Gets it back to Kuehu. Kuehu's pass underneath. The ball goes out of bounds. Megan Tinnan was planted underneath, looking for the basketball for a long time. And Kanekoa scrambling. Kuehu finally finds her. Foul will be called. Apparently, there was a foul on Melson. Is Melson. Number 20. And Tinnan will go to the line. 
of particular interest now is McFarland because her legs are cramping up, trying to keep them loose. So team fouls 10 for Ole Miss. Tinnen misses the first. Shot up, and that one is in. 64 57. Controlling lead with a little more than a minute left in the second overtime. This would be a tremendous victory for Hawaii. Nelson. Number one, Nelson against Tinnen. Gets it down deep. Shot is up, and that doesn't go by Hope. And just ripped off the glass by Jackson. Jackson's 12th board. She's got her second double-double, Jim, 11 and 12. Kuehu down deep. Kuehu turns. That's blocked. That ball is uh, blocked by Marlboro. It's a good matchup. They had Kuehu on McFarland, but Marlboro, nice help on defense. Nelson. Nelson loses the ball in the lane to Arbuckle. Arbuckle loses it. Shot is up by Hope. And that goes over the entire basket. 13 seconds, 12 seconds left. Hawaii will upset Ole Miss. Hawaii will play for the championship of this tournament against North Carolina tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And Ole Miss will play Illinois for third place. Double overtime victory for Hawaii in the rain for Waihime. Red Star Moment is sponsored by Heineken. Give yourself a good name. Red Star Moment in this game, the record-setting three-point shot by Megan Tennant. And that was her 129. The most valuable players for this uh, particular double overtime game, Valencia McFarland. McFarlane had a total of 11 points, three triples. And for Hawaii, Keisha Kanikoa. Kanikoa had 25. That was her high for the year. And she contributed six triples. The most uh, outstanding player award sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. There's more women's basketball headed your way as the A-team Rainbow Wahine Showdown concludes tomorrow night. Tune in for live coverage starting at 6. Hawaii hosts North Carolina. Catch it all right here on your home for University of Hawaii Sports. K5, the home team. For Lori Santi and the K5 sports crew, this is Jim Leahy. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been another explosive sports presentation. K5, the home team.